Hello everyone. So we have finally started now. So this is SimPy, and you had a PyDai workshop right now. So most of the people have already installed SimPy when you install Anaconda, and uh, PyDai uses SimPy for that. PyDai uses SimPy a lot for uh, doing symbolic stuff. So all the magic you see in PyDai is because of SimPy. So first of all, who am I? I'm a developer at SimPy, and a student at Delhi Technology University. I'm a Pythonista and of course a FOSS enthusiast. So what is SimPy? SimPy is basically an open source Python library. It is used for symbolic computation. It is written entirely in Python. It does not require any external dependencies except a small package named ampmath, which is of, uh, I guess, 100 KBs. So what is symbolic computation? So I hope you understand this Pi. Uh, raise your hand if you understand pi. All right. Do you understand pi? 3.14. This pi. Okay. So when I say pi, then it's a symbolic stuff. Uh, when you say 3.14, then it's numeric. So if in layman terms, if I have to explain you what is symbolic, so this is pi is symbolic. And uh, which one do you think is the exact value of pi? This one is this one. You can put a million digits here, but it will still not be exact. So the the one above is the exact value of pi, the exact representation of pi. All right. Okay. You can have some issue. Okay. So why SimPy? SimPy is totally standalone, so it does not require anything else, and uh, it's full featured. And it is a BSD license. So how many of you understand what is a BSD license? OK. So BSD, you can, BSD license is something you can do anything with the package. So you can even use it for commercial purposes as well. So there's a very, that's, that's a very liberal license. <coughs> so you can use SimPy for commercial purposes and make money out of it. And some of the apps you do, do, you, do, you do this. Embraces Python, so it tried to use all the Python idioms wherever possible. So it does not do uh, reinvent the wheel. Usable as a library. So most of the computer algebra systems are not usable as a library. For example, we have uh, Sage, or uh, a lot of things are there. So you have something like, uh, for example, you have IPython. So it's more of a command line based. So you can use SimPy as a library as well. So if you do it on the top of the script from SimPy import everything. You can use in the library and use all the functionality in that. So the goal, the goal is to become a full-featured computer algebra system. So a bit of history here. Andre Sertik started the project in 2006, and now it's the 10th year of SimPy. Thanks to Google for uh, financial support. Most of the code of SimPy has been written by Google of Google Summer of Code students, and I'm one of them. It has part participated in every GSOC since uh, 2007. And uh, Aaron Miller, who is the lead developer of SimPy, was also a GSOC student in 2009 and 2010. So here's a quick dump of features SimPy have. Small package. Less than five megabytes and can do a lot of things. You'll see. So here's some quick stats: over 400 contributors, half a million lines of code, 2,700 stargazers on GitHub, 1,400 forks, and a lot of other things. And the best part is that we have recently released SimPy 1.2. So it's been 10 years since SimPy started. So you can say it's a very well-tested library. <coughs> So now basically we have moved from the point of SimPy as a toy to a SimPy as a tool. So, so you can simply use SimPy for some real stuff now. So here's some stats about SimPy. The blue line you see, okay, you don't see. The blue line you see is of SimPy, this one. So we can see SimPy has a pretty large community and a lot of contributors. 
So that was a bit about Simpy. So future plans, make things faster. So symbolics is particularly pretty slow. So doing things faster in a symbolic manipulation system is always the goal. Implement more algorithms. Encourage more people to use Simpy, uh, use and contribute to Simpy. That's why I'm here. So if you want to know what we are, what the goal of Simpy is, you can go to this uh, GSOC Ideas page, which uh, pretty much lists everything which we need to implement in future. So that was about Simpy. So let's start now with a tutorial. So all of you have tutorials like uh, tutorial exercises. The one I gave you on the pen drive. Okay, you don't have. Okay, wait a second. Okay, you can go here one second. You can go to this web page, and uh, you can get the tutorial from here. Uh, you can get this uh, from uh, this website also. Start the Jupyter Notebook on the same directory in which you have the tutorial exercises. Using Simpy, you can simply do from Simpy import everything, star, and we have a printing module for doing for printing stuff in LaTeX 3D print, and uh, that uses uh, Chrome uses MathJax to render LaTeX. So I'll simply Python has a math module and which has a sqrt function. So if you do math.sqrt2, you'll get 1.414. So this is this result is basically symbolic. Okay. Then we have uh, then we have also defined SQRT in Simpy as well. So this SQRT is from Simpy, <laughs> and this is the symbolic result we get in Simpy. So I hope you have an idea of what is the symbolic and what is numeric. Basically, uh, this is uh, not a teaching session, so I'm not. I'll not be doing everything. We have some exercises here, so I want you people to do that. And uh, we have some stickers as well. If you're able to do some exercises, we'll give you some stickers. 
So I hope all of you have opened the tutorial exercises. So it says call a equals on minus one to find where on the circle the x coordinate equals one. So we have all the trigonometry defined in SymPy. We can simply call a cos of minus one. So what you saw here, you called a cos on minus one, and the answer is of course pi, and this a cos is from SymPy. So math also does have a a cos function, the math fun uh, the math module from Sim uh, Python. So let's call a cos on that function. So this is the numerical result which Python gives you. So now we have symbols. So like if you have used num num numpy, you have nd array, and if you have used pandas, you have data frames. But in SymPy, we have symbols. So if you want to do anything in SymPy using symbols, symbols is basically mathematical stuff. So you need to write, write some symbols. For example, if you want to use x, y, z as a symbol, mathematical symbols, you will simply pass the arguments x, comma y, comma z, or you can uh, separate them with space. So this x, y, z now holds the SymPy variable x, y, z. And we also have some fancy symbols, alpha, beta, gamma. <coughs> and you're free to create expressions as you want. Let's say log of alpha into, alpha into beta. So 
let's call a cost from uh, mass modeling python okay we have not imported some by So you are you're free to create some crazy expressions from SymPy. So here is a small exercise, use symbols to create two symbols named mu and sigma. So how we do is this. Now if you call mu, then you will see the fancy mu. Okay, it's NYU actually. <coughs> so here is the smallest size. You need to write bell curve in SymPy. So, so you have to do this. Try creating this bell curve. Are you able to see this bell curve? e to the power x minus mu whole square upon sigma square. So this is just an expression. You have to create variables and then create an expression out of it. So that's the thing. So let's try creating one. X mass mu whole square. <coughs> Then we have so does that looks like bell curve? Does that look like bell curve? It is rearranged. Okay, am I speaking Hebrew? You are not getting? Yes. Okay. So just let me know what you are not getting. So we have used some SymPy symbols to create a complex expression, the bell curve. So here is another exercise. Find the derivative of x square. Okay, we have already found the derivative. So when you created x symbol and uh, when you are creating an expression from that x symbol that is x square so x square is basically a simple expression so you can call this dot diff method on any simple expression to differentiate it all right so that's how differentiation is done in simple you can do it on some other complex expression as well and trigonometric as well so if you differentiate sin x you will get cos x of course and you can also differentiate multivariate of course so with respect to the variable you want now take the derivative of bell curve with respect to x okay 
okay, we are not for this. Now here is another exercise, derivative of bell curve with respect to sigma. Are you able to? Another exercise find the second and third derivative of bell curve. Okay, just raise your hands if you are able to do this. Okay, the second and third derivative of bell curve. Bell curve. Of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the bell curve. The bell curve we wrote earlier. Yeah. But, uh, with respect to x. Yes. Right. With respect to x. So can you do non-partial derivative? With respect to x. Yes. Sorry. Can you do non-partial? Non-partial. Yeah. Like you know, get the, the gradient. Okay, non-partial you mean, okay, you want to differentiate with every variable it means. Yeah, so we need to get the gradient. Right? Okay. So if it's a multivariate, it needs to, okay, let's try to do that if you ask me. So it will give you an error, because for a multivariate expression, you need to specify the variable you want to differentiate with respect to. So the here the exercise is you need to find the second as well as third derivative of bell curve with respect to x. So when you write this, you have the first derivative of bell curve. And if you want to find the second derivative, you'll call the diff method on the return value. You have the second derivative here. And if you want to find the third derivative, you can do the same stuff. All right. So you can create complex expression with SumPy as you saw already. We have this simplify function. So simplify, as the word suggests, is same what you expect from it. It will simply, it will try to simplify a complex mathematical expression into simple terms. So let's try to simplify this. So what do you think this simplification of sine squared x plus cos squared x will give? One. So try to call the simplify on third derivative of bell curve. So that should be difficult. Try to save this here. So that's how you simplify. So we also have simplify in simplify. So don't confuse simplify and simplify. Simplify is the mathematical simplification, and simplify is a simplify simplification. So basically, if you have a string, you can convert into a simplify expression. So we we have passed a string here r into cos theta squared. So r cos theta r cos theta squared. So if you pass this string, it will convert itself into a simplify string, simplify expression. Though we don't use this uh, caret symbol in simplify, but it, it is capable of uh, parsing a lot of complex expressions as well. 
So this was the symbols and derivative functions. Let's go to the second. So SymPy also have a solve function, which is used to solve expressions, equations. So we try. We have passed uh, the first argument is the expression itself, the function itself, and the second argument is the variable with respect to you want to solve the expression with. So here we have passed x square minus four with respect to x. So that's what you expect from it. So x. Equations in SymPy is represented as x square minus 9 double equals to 0. So if you solve this, you'll get minus 3 plus 3. Okay, sorry, it's a gotcha actually. So double equals to is what uh, is comparing values in Python. So SymPy is not doing anything like reinventing its wheel. So if you equate two, two things which are not equal, so it will return false. So if you pass false to the solve, Function it will turn false of course. Try to uh, create three variables: height, width, area, and uh, try to solve with, uh, with this area with respect to height. We are trying to solve height in terms of area and width. So nothing fancy here. So we have an expression for a volume of sphere, and we want to. Solve the expression for the radius of sphere. So, so we will first create the expression, and we will first define the symbols. The symbols which are using here is V and R. created expression for the volume of sphere. And you want to solve this for radius of sphere. So we will pass the expression to solve function. And the variable to solve for would be r, the radius. And this is the solution you will get in symbolic form. Simpy has a function for substitution. So substitution is what you expect in mathematics. Substituting a variable with respect to with, with another variable. So we have an expression here x square and we want to substitute y in the place of x. You will simply call subs on the expression and pass the dictionary of uh, key values. 
and will replace an expression. So you, here the exercise is uh, create this expression x square plus 2x plus 1 and try to substitute x sin x with uh, in the place of x. So if we have the expression here. substitutes sin x in the place of x. Do a lot of stuff with solve here. You can solve the volume, the area with respect to height, and if you want the first solution, you can. This is simple. Uh, you can get this this first solution here, and you can define any type of expression in SymPy. So there is an assumption module in SymPy. For example, if you have a, if you define a symbol and you want it to be real always, so you have to you have a keyword argument for that. For example, here we are defining a couple of symbols V and R, and you know that volume and radius of a sphere would be always real. So you can pass this keyword argument real equal to true, and if you want, you can check it as well. For example, V dot is real. So here's small size. Compute the surface area of sphere in terms of volume. I'll leave this on you. We'll move fast now. So there's some plotting support as well, which uh, is because of uh, Matplotlib. So Simba is not inventing its own plotting module uh, in plotting engine. So it uses Matplotlib in its plotting module. You can plot some simple expressions in SymPy. Here is how it looks. And here is text plot. Now let's move to more magic, the integrals module of SymPy. So SymPy is also capable of integrating functions, expressions. So let's call SymPy and uh, create some variables here. So we have our integrate function for that pass the equation, the expression, and uh, the variable with respect to you want to integrate the expression. So if you like integrate x square, you'll get x cubed by 3. That's what you expect. So for definite integral, you can you have a tuple, arg tuple argument for that. The first argument is the expression for which you want to, the symbol for which you want to integrate, and the upper and lower limits. And you can also do this for symbolic arguments as well. So x, cube, x to the power n can also be integrated definitely from two variable arguments. This is how it looks. So 
So here's some quick exercise to solve the above integrals. Let's do some. Integrate sin x from 0 to pi. So, this is the integral of sin x with respect to x from 0 to pi. So here is a small exercise. Try to find some integrals which SymPy is not capable of finding. And you can easily find some because it's not very easy to find some complex expressions. So let's move to the matrices module. We have a matrices module in SymPy which which does all the matrices operation and PyDi uses a lot of matrices. So let's create some simple symbols. And let's create a rotation matrix that is R cos theta, my, I, minus R, I sin theta, R sin theta and R cos theta. It is also printed pretty. So if you want to create uh, find the zero you can find this the jet method. You can also find the inverse and singular values. So where is a small exercise here? Find the inverse of the above matrix. So this is the inverse of 1x1y, one y1 y one matrix. So the operators in SymPy also work for ma matrices. So you can simply multiply the matrix with 2 by doing this simple expression. And of course you can multiply matrices as well. Here is how you create a column matrix. And if you want to rotate that matrix to an angle theta, you can do rotation into that matrix. And this is how you find the inverse. Okay, so here is a small exercise. Multiply the matrix M by its inverse. So try to see if you are getting the same original matrix. So do we get the same matrix?
So you need to simplify that to see the original matrix. So SimPy does not does any automatic simplification. You need to simplify by yourself and expand by yourself because a lot of time we need the expanded version and a lot of time we need the expanded version. So it does not try to guess what you need. You need to explicitly mention what you need. So here is a small exercise. Right, find methods to compute eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So that shouldn't be a difficult task. This is how you find eigenvalues. And you can access the items similar to what you do in NumPy. finding the determinant of the rotation matrix and then simplifying it. So you can explore a lot of other functionalities in matrices module. It's capable of doing a lot of things. So this is how you can see what are the methods available with matrices. M is a matrix here and you can see all the, by pressing a tab button here in, in IPython notebook. Okay, let's see some numerical evaluation. Uh, you may be wondering why numerical evaluation is in this SimPy library. So why I am talking about numerics in SimPy, since SimPy is a symbolics library. So a lot of times uh, you need to find the numeric result because uh, symbolics is not capable of doing everything for you. So you need to convert those, uh, you need to have the functionality to use that in your numeric code. So you can uh, find that in uh, SimPy as well. So SimPy has support to, uh, SimPy does not leave you when you are not able to do stuff in symbolics. It will show you a path to do numerics as well. So this is how you do it. So let's do some simple methods. Evalif uh, is basically numerical evaluation. So what I'm doing is, so if you If you call a cos minus minus one, it will, it will give you pi. And if you want the numerical results, so what you will do is you will call the valid function on this. There is also a shorthand for that. You can also do n here, and you can also set arbitrary precision. So if you want the value of pi to hundred digits, you can also find that. That's the value of pi, pi to 1000 digits. So where is the smallest size? So we recently found the integration of x to the power n. And uh, the size is try to substitute that definite integral. Try to substitute that result with the values given here. n equal to 2, y equal to 0, and z equal to 3. So try to solve this.
Just raise your hands if you are able to do this. Okay. So this is how I will do this. So now calculate the integral on the value on these values of n, y, and z, and uh, get the numeric result. This is the result and if you want to find the numeric result, you can call the value function on this. So we have some small exercises you can do. So let's move to the got, uh, solvers. Okay, rather move to, move to uh, calculus. Let's go to calculus first. There are small, some small exercises you can do. Try to find the differentiation of all these functions over.
this is how I'll calculate the differentiation of this function. So you can create your own functions using uh, the functionality in SimPy. Like you can create a function for L, hosp L hospital rule, if you remember. So I'll not deep dive much into the uh, calculus here. Okay, let me show you some features of the solvers module. So SimPy already have a solve function, which you already saw. So recently we wrote a new function, solve set. So let me show you why we wrote that new function. Try to play with the solve set function in SimPy. S O L V E S E T. So this new feature has uh, been implemented in SimPy 1.0 only. So recently we introduced SimPy 1.0. So if you are using an older version like 0.76, so you will not be able to use this version of Solvers. So let me show you what Solvers was earlier and what it is now. So we have already seen some of the features of Solver and, uh, and the input API. So this is the old Solve and uh, you can solve some equations with this. Not some, you can solve a lot of equations with this. So let's try to solve some. You can solve it for single equation, uh, for single solution, for a set of solutions as well. And you can also solve for uh, symbolic equations, totally symbolic equations. So here we have x to the power x minus 1 equal to 0 and we have solved this for x and we are getting the result 0 ok so let's try to solve the e to the power x plus 1 so you guessed it no solution but it has a solution i pi so it actually has infinitely many solutions if you remember the Euler's identity so it has written only one solution 
so that's actually wrong so here we have actually power x plus 1 and solving it for x we will get i pi as well that's because of the famous solar identity and here also we are calculating the solution for e to the power x minus 1 upon x so it has no solutions it has turned a empty list so we don't know actually what has happened here because uh, are there no solutions or uh, we couldn't find any so both the cases are possible so this was a mess earlier okay let's solve the sin x minus 1 equation that is So, uh, how many solutions do you think of this equation has? Sin x minus 1 equal to 0. That is sin x equal to 1. Any guesses? It has actually infinitely many solutions. But it returns only one solution. That is the principal solution. So, this is also actually wrong because we need to return all the solutions. And uh, now we have this equation 1. So, and this expression 1, and we want to solve this for x. So, no solution. Or we can't find any. So, it also returns an empty list. So, now we have a equation x minus x equal to 0. So, how many solutions does this have? x equal to x. So it also has infinitely many solutions because you put anything in, in the place of x, you will, it, will, it, will always, it will always be true. But the result is empty list here. So this was actually wrong and this is actually wrong. So we introduced a new module named Solve Set, which I, I and my mentor started, uh, my mentor started uh, an year ago in 2014. So Let's try to see how solve set handles these conditions, situations. So from Senpai import solve set. Okay. You're using old Senpai. Okay. He's not using the latest Senpai, I need to update this. Yes. Uh, you can just download this notebook and run with it. Sorry? Just download this notebook and run with it. Okay, you want to uh, I'll show the output only. No, no, just download this notebook and then just uh, run locally. Okay, where is it? Okay, it's running here. And so it's running in the browser. Okay. Just uh, find it and download it. Let me So this is a new solve set module. So let's try to solve our first equation with solve set. The ax square plus bx plus c, that's the general quadratic equation. So you all know the solution, minus b plus minus under root b square, b square minus 4ac upon 2a. So it will give you what you expect. So now we have an equation 1 and we'll solve it for x. So what you expect is no solution. So how do you represent a no solution in mathematics? So you represent a no solution in mathematics by an empty set. So that's what it gives you, an empty set. And then we have an equation x minus x. And we solve, in solve set we also have a domain keyword argument in which you can set the domain in which you want to solve the equation. 
For example, if you want to solve the equation only in real or in complex domain, you can set it. Or if you want to solve the equation in a particular interval, for example, 0 to infinity or 0 to uh, 0 to 10 or anything like that, so you can set those as, those as well. So, so x minus x is always true equation, so it will give you the whole real thing because you are solving it for solving it in only real domain. And if you solve it in complex domain, it will give you the whole complex domain. Now let's solve this equation x to the power x minus 1. So as I already told you, there are infinite solution to this equation. That is e to the power x equal to 1 because it's because of the famous either identity. So it should return infinite solutions. So how do we represent infinite solutions in SymPy is this. Okay, so okay, you're solving it in only reals. So in reals, it has only one solution. But sine x equal to one. If you solve it in real, so it has infinitely many solutions. So it should represent all the solutions. So this is how it works. So basically, we have an image set module for uh, representing these infinite solutions, mm -hmm. and a complex set module for representing infinite solution in complex domain. So we also implemented a linear system solver functionality last Google Summer of Code. So if we have a matrix and we want to solve that matrix linearly, that is, uh, if that matrix represents the linear system of equation, you can solve that with this linsol function. This linsol function was inspired from the mathematical linsol function. So let's say we have a matrix M and we want to solve this system of equation with respect to the variables x, y, and z. So we can solve that as well. And if we have two matrices A and B and uh, we want to solve that with respect to linsol. The first argument is a tuple of A and B. So this is how the solution will look like. So basically it is capable of capable of accepting all types of input formats. So either you give it a augmented matrix, a simple matrix or a, a list of equations. So it can do all the stuff. It's tolerant enough to solve all types of systems. So let's try to solve an augmented matrix with respect with some nil solve. And we have defined some variables which we can use to solve for. So here is the solution. So the solution is minus 2x square minus 3x4 plus 2. So the solution, you're getting the solution because the system is underdetermined. So it has infinitely many solutions. For different values of x4, x4 is x4 and x2 are free variables. So for different values of x2 and x4, you'll get infinitely many solutions. So that's what it represents. And the third input type is the list of equations format. So if you have a list of equations, you can simply pass to the Linsol function, and these other elements would be the list of uh, the symbols you want to solve for. So let's say we have defined the equations here. These are the equations. So x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 plus x4 minus 7 equal to 0, and so on. This is the, these are the three equations, and you want to solve for four variables. So let's try to solve this with Linsol. So this is how you can solve all types of input format system of linear equations with Linsol and solves it. So currently there are a lot of things which can be done in solvers model. It has a lot of scope and uh, we participate in all the Google Summer of Code. So we hope to implement more features this GSOP. And if you are interested in contributing to SimPy, you can I have list all the links here.
So here's the link for mailing list, get a sign. So get a sign is pretty active. If you want to ask for quick help, you can get here. And uh, and uh, all the contents of this today's workshop you can find here. The slides, the notebooks, the HTML source, and uh, the source repo on GitHub. And here is my Twitter, uh, the Twitter handle of Simpy and the GitHub repository of Simpy. So that's it for today. Thank you. So any questions? So if you have any questions, just yeah. Take us. Uh, is there any other online material we can use to better understand Simpy? Right? Yes, yeah. there are many. Uh, yeah. There are many. Simpy tutorials, there are PyTorch tutorials, and there are documentations. So okay. you can find everything on simpy.org or the pydai.org. Okay, how about some tutorial videos that uh, go a little more into detail? Yeah, so we have actually uh, presented everything in the uh, SciPy Sci Sci conferences. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you can just uh, uh, search on YouTube about uh, simpy and SciPy. So let me just do that for you. Okay, so we have all the uh, talks, part one, part two, and okay, so so these are the videos. They are very detailed and they are uh, they are just awesome. We actually uh, even we have learned from them. Yeah, that's so pretty much it. So and and you can uh, search PyDai too. So yeah, so. This is uh, one video from Jason Murray. He uh, at least started uh, PyDai. He actually uh, shifted the module from uh, SimPy to PyDai, and he, he's a uh, co maintainer of the PyDai and SimPy. He maintains the uh, package. So, this is the talk uh, by him, and it contains everything that I've covered and in much more detail with all the uh, rigorous physics and everything else. Yeah. Okay. So, You can go to pyday.org and get all the information that you need. Okay, and you can go to simpy.org. Yeah, so, okay, so you have everything here. Yes.